Hey everybody, I apologize if you got notifications uh, that I uploaded videos earlier today. I did, but I had some issues with editing and it just was a hot mess. So I decided to start over and we're gonna do this again. Uh, it is currently May 2nd and it is what we term third winter here in Minnesota. Uh, it's been cold, it's been rainy, it's been windy. And as a result, I have had little motivation to come out here and freeze in the garage. So. Uh, with that said, I haven't gotten a lot done, but I did have the help of my 15 year old, uh, this past weekend. And we were out here doing a few things on the car. So I'm going to bring you up to speed on what has been done on the D2S8 and talk about what's coming up very soon on the channel as well. Um, unfortunately I had actually set up a GoPro and had intended to do a time-lapse of all the work that, uh, we were doing over the weekend forgot to check the battery charge before starting that and picked the wrong battery pack. So I had about 36 seconds of content and yeah, it was pretty much a wash. So here we go. Here's a quick recap uh, and we'll go forward from here. So the first thing we tackled was, if you're familiar with the D2S8, this is the all too familiar automatic transmission from the car. This is actually not out of my car. This is out of a parts car that I purchased to repair this car, but I'm just gonna show you, <clears throat> these are the cooler and return lines that go up to the, from the transmission to the front of the radiator. And on my car during the little incident, it got slightly kinked right there, which of course meant it wouldn't really correctly fasten to the radiator any longer. So the other side of that down there attaches to this point on the side of the trans. So if you ever have to replace these lines because they're leaking, uh, you just know, look at the drive shaft on the driver's side and it's at about, oh, I'd say one o'clock up from that. So relatively um, simple. There's one bolt that holds them on. Those two flanges just sort of overlap each other and all is, all is well. So uh, the only caveat would be that as it goes through the car, and I'll take you over to this side here. <clears throat> Get another light. It attaches, if you can kind of see down here, let me get this light in here first for you. That's maybe gonna work, maybe not. <laughs> okay, down in there you can see right in the middle of the screen, there's the rubber grommet and the metal bracket and there's actually two of those rubber grommets high and low for each line and that's just held on with the bolt so you have to remove that in order to liberate the, the lines up front here so we have the new ones zoom out here new ones are hanging out here so thank you to the member of the community that sold me these uh, got those in got them cleaned up and then to get at the rear Take off your, let me get this light back out of here. There's nothing magnetic on this car and sure enough, my light finds the one thing in there. So um, we actually went in through the side here down by this axle shaft. You can actually, if you take off the wheel, which I wish I would have left it off at this point because I could show you, but coming in from the back side here, uh, take off the fender liner and then you can actually reach up and with a long extension and a swivel on the end, you can actually get that bolt out. Now I will say, <clears throat> found that I actually had to stick a little pry bar down through here, all the way down and you can kind of, you can actually get a clean shot of the bolt on top of that, or where that bracket is. I don't know if I can get this camera to focus on it down there, but it's eh, sort of in the middle of the screen, right? Right there, in between that. Yeah, that's not working real well. Sorry about that, but anyway, there is a, you know, they're, they're basically pressed in with O-rings, so you just need to somehow get it pried away from that. And it's conveniently a little too far for your arm to reach, <laughs> but uh, you can get in there and with a long pry bar, just gently ease it away from the uh, engine block and then out it comes. So that ended up not being too big of an issue. And then we ended up going after the uh, <clears throat> crash tube because this was actually crumpled in the crash off the original, on the original car. 
Uh, for those of you that don't know, we got hit by a Jeep right in the headlight, basically. So it took up the headlight, crumpled this, bent this, messed up the bracket, and then just ever so slightly bent the um, pulley on the cam pulley on this side, just so it had a, just a little bit of a wobble, but it never jumped time. Uh, so we could drive the car on and off of the tow truck and everything and all was well. Um, so I needed a fender, a hood, a bumper, a headlight. And that was, you know, a crash tube. And that was mostly uh, the extent of the damage. Had a little bit of a rub down the side of the car. And I'm going to have the, uh, these are the winter wheels, the optional D2S8 winter wheels, which you probably don't see very often in, here in the States. Um, they are 17 inch. But anyhow, uh, I basically bought a parts car from a, a local import um, service shop that has a small fleet of them and got lucky that it was three miles from my house, has every part I need, and you can see that the, uh, the hood or the bonnet is sitting upside down on top of the car and a bunch of floor mats here for padding. But it's just hanging out here waiting to go on and you can see the silver is flaking off of this one. Uh, but I do have a replacement grill, so I will swap that out before we install it. In fact, I'm going to take it out because we're going to have to have this painted because this is actually charcoal and my car is Ming Blue. So we'll get that taken care of. And same with the fender on this side. It's also charcoal. Uh, I do have... I'm probably going to use the charcoal fender off of this side as well. But I do have a, a decent Ming Blue one. Um as well, like as a spare. So we'll get that all painted and blended and we'll see how far we go actually, because it's a slippery slope, as you know. <laughs> uh, but our next task, we were going to uh, go after the transmission fluid and we'll do a little break here and I'll show you that. So regarding the transmission fluid and filter change, uh, I had done it not that long ago. In fact, I had done the transgo valve in the valve body and done the fluid and filter, or I should say rather I had a mechanic friend of mine handle that for me. Uh, we also did front control arms and everything new at that time. So it hasn't been maybe you know 20,000 miles ago, 25,000 miles tops. Um, but I put my jack stands in the wrong place. So... Our efforts to uh, tackle that last night were thwarted. We decided I'm going to reposition a few things and then move the jack stands to a better spot so that we can remove that cross member uh, that's underneath the transmission pan. So hopefully with a little luck, we'll, uh, I may reposition these stands here shortly and then I can work on tackling that. I'll probably tackle that fluid change uh, tomorrow evening uh, after work and progress uh, then we can actually i can put the front clip on this thing because i i'll need that in order to run it to get it up to temp to properly set the transmission fluid level and those of you that have these cars understand that but i'll probably try to film some of that process as well i know there's some of that already on youtube so i don't need to go in too much depth but at least give you the kind of the pointers of that um, and go from there uh, the next thing is if anyone is watching this that has actually replaced this coolant pump that's down here in the firewall, uh, I would love to hear from you. I, I looked in the official manual and of course it says step one, remove brake servo. <laughs> and so I was really hoping I didn't have to cross that bridge. Um, I was kind of wondering if I could, you know, that doesn't look the easiest thing in the world either, but who knows? So if you've done it, and you have some tips on how to do it, I guess, efficiently or effectively, <laughs> what do I need to remove to get that out of there? I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment and uh, I would be very grateful. So uh, anyhow, I think that's it for now. Uh, like I said, we did get the crash tube back in. We got this kind of hooked up. We fixed the washer pump because that was uh, leaking. And of course, when you have the headlight out and bumper off, it's way easier to get at that. So definitely took care of that. But uh, yeah, that's it for the uh, D2S8 update for now. But uh, the next thing you're going to see coming to the channel is actually going to be C4S4 related. And it's going to be on this white car here. And it's going to be, basically I need to swap this over from winter mode 
to summer mode and it's still wearing its winter wheels with uh, snow tires at this point in May. It's crazy. So we're going to get this one a really good cleanup. It's got a bunch of tree crud on it right now. And then the next thing you're going to start seeing is full suspension rebuild on this one. It needs every bushing, every shock, every basically everything. So we'll tackle that and stay tuned. There'll be a lot more. Hope you're all well. Preserve your S-cars.